Hey everybody, welcome to Pale in Comparison. In this podcast, my sister uses her knowledge of the other verse to take a look at Pact, Wild Bo's least appreciated work, and I try to not give away any spoilers. I'm Jenny, and Malia convinced me to read Worm. I'm Malia, and Jenny convinced me to read everything else. This episode, we are covering Gathered Pages 2 and Damages, Chapter 2.7. Before we get into that, however, I'd like to issue a spoiler warning. This podcast is filled with pale spoilers. If you don't know why the Kenneteers were chosen as practitioners and don't want us to tell you, stop now, read Pale, and come back to this podcast. As for Pact, there will be full spoilers through the chapters that we are covering. All right, guys. So we actually have a special announcement. Um, Yay! So we're really, really excited to share this with you. Is it okay if I go ahead and tell them, Leah? Yeah, totally. Okay. Um, we are actually starting a cooking show. I know this it's like really out there. Probably not what you'd expect from us. But, you know, I'm really into baking. Um, wait, wait. What? Yeah. No. Wait. No, no, no. no. Wait. You didn't. Did huh? you not read the email correctly? <laughs> yeah. Didn't it say we were getting like joined up with Food Network? No. <laughs> wait. It said Food Media. That's no. like food media. I, That's no, no, like no. You switched food. the D and the F. Huh? Go look again. What? Oh, I'm an. <laughs> All right, I'm an idiot. Um, this is actually way better. <laughs> so, it's way better. Um, all right. I don't have to start a whole other podcast. About um, cooking. Okay, Emily, I'm going to let you take it so that I don't um, fuck it up anymore. <laughs> but well, this is actually way better than I thought. So <laughs> I was trying to be really excited about it. I didn't really understand why a food media or food network would want us. Um, this and makes... also, it seems like videos would be better than a podcast if we're doing like cooking demonstrations. I mean, I, you know, I, I don't judge. I mean, <laughs> you know, I'm just, they recognize our awesomeness. Um, <laughs> yes, but the the real news is that we're super excited that we're joining the Doof Network of Podcasts. Um, so most of you probably know the wonderful people at Doof Media, and I'm sure you all listen to their podcasts. If you don't, um, you should really check them out. They're super fabulous and um, seem to be some of the only like people who are producing Wild Boat content. So they're lovely. Um mm-hmm. But they asked us if we'd like to join and team up and continue to create, like, cool new projects. And we said yes. And we're very honored and very excited. So Yeah, that's going to be fantastic. A lot better than I just thought. Um, I mean, yeah, I, don't, I didn't really. Yeah, I didn't get it. But <laughs> I was like, OK, I guess we can do some, like, I can make brownies and stuff. This is much I mean- better. Um, <laughs> we, <laughs> we've been listening um, to them ever since. I, I think I started listening to them during... Um, when they were releasing We've Got Ward still. Um, and obviously they have a bunch of amazing podcasts out there to listen to. And we get to join. Yes. <laughs> Woo! So yeah. we're pretty excited about that. So, I mean, nothing's really going to change in terms of our content. When you're listening to us, you basically just get to be supporting not just us, but an amazing network. So win-win. Yeah. Yes. And, and so... That being said, obligatory plug, um, <laughs> please consider becoming our patrons. You can do that by going to patreon.com slash doof media. Um, now part of your proceeds will be going to support us as we make this podcast and continue to think about and develop other projects. Honestly, joining the network made me have like four ideas for new podcasts. And then I was like, Malia, you're a law student. You don't have time, but <laughs> we're kicking some ideas around and we think it'll be really great. And so for those of you like me, who only listen to their Wild Bow content, don't wait to be invited to a network of podcasts before you start listening to Doof Media's other <laughs> stuff, because it's really great. Mm-hmm. Um, Jenny and I have both been listening to the Doof cast. Um, I actually went back and clicked on a whole bunch of episodes that I was interested in, and I just listened to their like Wachowski series, and now I'm definitely going to go watch Speed Racer sometime. Um, it mm. sounds fantastic, so... Yes. A plug for our wonderful new network. Yes. We're pretty, <laughs> we're pretty excited about it. So, yeah. Thanks for listening, guys. And we're, we'll get on to the rest of our podcast. <laughs> yeah. Woo. Yay. All right. I will go over a chapter summary first. <laughs> and then we can kind of talk about that first. Um, so we're going over 
Let me see. Gathered pages two and damages chapter 2.7, as Malia said. So we're basically going to go over some expert, not, well, not experts. Sorry. We're going <laughs> over some excerpts um, from Fabulous, Implementum, and Domains. We then cut back to Maggie looking over those texts at Blake's house. She tries to make a deal and then talks vaguely about her backstory and chosen practice then continues trying to make a deal. <laughs> However, they're all interrupted by Laird arriving and confronting Blake about the letter. He ends up spilling the truth about what happened to Molly. Mm. <laughs> all right, <Leah. laughs> How do you like these chapters? They, they hurt me <laughs> and my soul. <laughs> I don't know. I like... For, so, like, last episode, I was like, ooh, friends. Like, ooh, there's Maggie. Like, ooh, yay. And I forgot that Wild Bo was, was waiting in the wings to rip my heart into tiny pieces. <laughs> but it's also like, I tend to like most of the characters in Wild Bo stories, you know? And in this mm-hmm. one, it's like, I adore Blake. I like Rose a lot. I mean, I guess I like Grandma Rose, but she's an asshole. And then Ms. <laughs> Lewis is cool, but also, you know, like, it's not great that she exists necessarily. And mm-hmm. then there's the landlord who's perfect and wonderful who we hopefully will never see again. I guess I like Molly and Paige. Okay, I guess there are some characters I like, but most people in the story I don't like, and that's a weird feeling. There's yeah. a lot of sucky people in the story, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, but it was, I mean, the the textbooks were funny because I was, like, assuming that... I, I think the first bit of the Fomulus text that we get here, I should have just, like, actually checked, but I think it's, like, the same that we get in the Fomulus text in the pale excerpt. And then it goes into like different parts of the book. Um, but I was kind of like, Oh, mm. I don't need to read this. I can skim over it. And then I was like, wait, no, <laughs> I've never read this part. <laughs> um, so that was sort of funny. It seemed like, I mean, having read the ones in pale first, it really felt like those ones were written first. Like they felt more foundational in some mm. ways than parts of these. And I'm curious as to like, if you agree based on how you read these first. Hmm. I guess I could say that, well, I mean, so you're saying you think like the pale ones just seemed like they were more, more foundational? Kind of. I mean, I think, I don't remember exactly which one struck me as this. I think it was maybe particularly the the Implementum one, but that one was really interesting because he goes through several of the implements, like example by example, and then he's like, and here's 15 other ones. Do it yourself. Like, which to me feels like Wild Bill got like tired or, but it also felt like, okay, kids, like do the thing. Whereas in the pale one, he's like, I'm going to talk about all 25 or how many? One, two, three, six plus 21, 21 of these, which is a lot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, let me see. He went over like in, in pale or not. I keep wanting to say the opposite book that we're talking about. So I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, we're talking about Pact, damn it. Okay. <laughs> um, in Pact, he specifically, let me see, he went over the stone, wand, talisman, scepter, sword, and chalice, like in terms of examples, kind of. Uh-huh. Um, so he didn't go and write like 25 things out because that, that would have been a little insane um, to do. <laughs> It'd be right, very interesting I, to read. but um, I think he does that in Pale, but he also is only doing the implementum text for that extra material yeah it's a little bit different and then here like it's kind of neat because we're basically reading what maggie's choosing to skim over at least Mm -hmm. that's how i was saying you know so it's kind of like you see a little bit of introduction and then she kind of skips to a couple different spots and kind of flips back and forth so i'll kind of go with you there i think pale in a sense was more a little bit easier to follow along as a beginner i guess Mm -hmm. but then like you also have these brand new practitioners who like are trying to read everything they can about doing that ritual and everything right right and and it makes sense that maggie already has some of the background and foundation i mean she already has an implement and so yeah it's neat thinking about oh what did maggie find interesting about this and it was nice to me that like the the interviews were really interesting i liked those a lot yeah those are cool well, well, we'll start with the Fabulous text, just because that was the first one. Um, mm-hmm. And then we'll kind of go back to the Implementum and all that. So, starts with just the introduction, and then moves on to um, Annabelle and Tromo's Steed of Inyo. 
Yeah. Well, the the only new thought that I really picked out of like the Fomulus part in particular was just like it struck me like why can you only have one familiar? Like I I kind of I kind of get the implement because it like changes you as a person. And I mean, the familiar does too. And I mean, I get that like it would just make people too OP and you got to draw the line somewhere. But like, it seems like if you're making an individual deal with an other, mm-hmm. you can just like keep doing that. Because like if, if familiars are sort of like marriage, like polygamy exists and like, I could see how it might be shitty for the other because they're just trapped in this relationship and then there's someone else. And I don't know if that would like also contaminate them or whatever and like mm. alter them. But like everything in this world is unfair to the others. So it just seems like yeah, it'd be possible. Well, I mean, we have that one guy in Pale that you know, manages to steal other people's familiars at least. Right. So. Which is fascinating and awful. Mm hmm. Yeah, kind of makes you wonder, like, how closely, because I know it's often compared to marriage, but, like, Mm -hmm. how closely does it really mirror marriage? Like, can you do a polygamy type thing? Can you do, where, like, one other has multiple practitioners that's familiar to? Can you have cheating? Like, (laughs) what would that even look like? (laughs) I mean, you couldn't, they couldn't lie about it necessarily, but, like. I mean, I think. It depends on, like, what the oath and the promises were, right? Because, like, it just occurred to me, like, getting married as a practitioner must be really intense. (laughs) Dude, can you imagine? Um, Like, those oaths are not... I mean, when you're getting married, you want to, like, be true to those things or whatever. But it's also, Mm -hmm. like, you know, I might be be shitty to you (laughs) when you're sick, right? Or whatever. Like, it's, like, it's... Yeah, I, I just wonder how... How it would be to be married to someone... Or to get married to someone who doesn't know about the practice. And then, like, how would it be to get married to someone who does? Like, what are those negotiations and, like, what are those vows like? Um, Hmm. I kind of wonder what it looks like um, when two practitioners get married and they both have a familiar. Like, how does how do those relationships change? Weird. Mm. Weird stuff, man. Yeah. These are all All, thoughts. All thoughts, guys. (laughs) That's right. So... (laughs) <laughs> um so annabelle and tromos steed of enyo um what did you think about these two i really liked them but i thought they're very scary and very sad um I, I thought it was really funny that like the the interviewer was like very conscious of writing out like the whole thing like tromos steed of enyo like it, you know <laughs> and then tromos is like it's okay like you can just call me tromos <laughs> like that was really good but it was also like Not because I'm cool with you, literally just to save time, which was just, like, really funny. Like, he was just like, I'm I'm not into this. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And I just, I I don't know, like, she kind of gives Grandma Rose vibes in the, like, wow, you're a badass and you've been through a lot and you've, like, like, overcome a lot. But Mm -hmm. also, like, you're scary and you have no friends, but also, like, oh, it's sad. I don't know. But she's cool with it. She's like, eh, you know, I'll live (laughs) with it. I don't need to get married or have friends. I guess that's fine, you know. <laughs> and she has Tromos, I guess. Um, right. Steed I mean, of she... Enyo. Right, she has Tromos Steed of Enyo. He didn't give me permission. Yeah. Um, to shorten it. I feel like <laughs> she was already kind of scary and standoffish mm-hmm. before bonding Tromos Steed of Enyo. Yeah, I also... The, the beginning um, where he's the interviewer is describing like the apartment setup mm-hmm. um, and where they're seated and everything. And he's like, Oh, a lot of like most places you go have like some things that are out of place, like some gifts or some like whatever, just like, th- or like they bought stuff cause it was cheaper and like, it's not completely perfect or whatever. And like, it's like Annabelle has made no such concessions. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. fuck. Yeah. Like that's the dream. Like live up to your like thorough and unyielding aesthetic. Like that's so fucking great. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I want to have enough money and enough security in my own vision or something to like perfectly have the aesthetic. Like and that's why space. she can't get married. She's like, what if he wants something that's not chains and battle axes all over the walls? I couldn't do it. I mean, I feel like that's probably not the main reason that she was <laughs> thinking of that. But I bet it's a reason. It it it, it probably 
I mean, yeah, probably maybe a little reason, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But so, yeah, so Tromos is a nightmare. Yeah. I was like, wait, is this like Alpi? Because Alpi's a mare. I feel like someone at some point has sort of said that she's a nightmare, mm-hmm. but she's not a horse. <laughs> Although she does do the whole entering people's dreams and fucking them up thing. Yeah. So they sound pretty similar, if not the same. They're pretty, I mean, there might be different, like, kinds of nightmares, right? Mm-hmm. But yeah, that, that was pretty cool, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, that was neat. Um, It's neat seeing, like, some of the little, like, I'm, I'm wondering if Wild Boy just, like, really loved this idea and, like, brought it into Pale or what, because it's really fun and they're very different but they're both very like serious and very much like focused on their job kind of yeah that's true it, it's pretty interesting hearing them talk about what will happen after the animal dies mm-hmm. as well like just she'll help traumas like scare the crap out of people basically <laughs> Like, it's kind of nice like it, it's weirdly <laughs> heartwarming he's like yeah like i like annabelle and she can handle and like she and me are gonna ride around and fuck people's like minds for <laughs> eternity how sweet um, it was yeah. really sweet they like they really click she doesn't need a oh no like, they do they totally click they're perfect she doesn't need a but... spouse she has tromos feet of and he That's was right. just like she reminds me of like the gods i used to serve or whatever and i was like fuck yeah like respect like i just i really i really liked it <laughs> it was pretty great <laughs> um oh, and it God. was neat meeting like a lord of a city and stuff and it was just funny how like they were like Please get out of my house. Like, they were just like <laughs> I don't yeah. know. I really liked it. <laughs> oh my gosh. They also, in this text, whenever Lacey and Vic, um, this was the last thing um, in that section, but I just put it in the fabulous part just because it makes sense. Um, <laughs> but this is the last part um, of this chapter. So. This one was pretty pretty odd, huh? <laughs> <laughs> this one was a lot. This one was much more depressing. And a stark contrast where instead of like, we're super powerful and like the practice is like arguably made our lives better and we like, you know, live in this nice place and have all these good things and have like a relationship that we totally entered into based on whatever. This is just like, oh, our lives are trash. Because yeah. Because we fucked with the practice and it backfired and now this is just our lives and it was just really depressing like accidentally making your boyfriend and other and then being like well you can be my familiar like it just uh like so you won't go to prison like i just <laughs> but yeah he he yeah. It just is very it's very tense he's fidgeting and and she's like sitting in her underwear and holding a gun and i'm like who's the gun for like is it for vic like this is horrifying it is a little weird that she couldn't put pants on, you know? <laughs> I mean, that's cool. You gotta be comfortable in your space, but I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Depression is real? Uh, True. But. It's kind of weird, like, there's a stranger in your home, but also, I guess you just, you don't care, you know? Like, it was, it was also, it was interesting and sad and frustrating that these two interviews were very, like, everything has a price and blah, blah, blah. Like, we're very reinforced in this. Because, Mm -hmm. like, it was obvious these people were doing these interviews, like, to get the thing. Yeah. Like, you gave me a super nice bottle of scotch, so I guess you can ask me a couple questions. Versus, like, you have an amulet that may or may not, like, make our lives, like... A lot fucking better. Yeah. I I don't think that the interviewers were at all, like, being, like, shitty or exploitative or whatever. But it was just very much, like, a quid pro quo thing. Yeah, like, you... Like, nobody's doing anything just to be nice or like mm-hmm. just to share info like they, they gotta get something out of it mm-hmm. for sure yeah i hope that talisman thing helped them out uh, um i hope so yeah. i mean how crazy to like try to get better at basketball <laughs> and then you get possessed by some weird thing and eat somebody yeah like what the fuck yeah it just sucked so bad and i I thought it was really interesting the like Lacey cheated to get ahead thing because it was like oh did the practice help and she was like yeah I was like popular and stuff but it's like because I cheated 
And then Vic was like, oh, I did like I was also good at things, but I didn't cheat. But then it was like until I started using the practice to like become possessed by spirits to be better at basketball. <laughs> yeah. Like, Children should not be introduced to the practice. Yes. I mean, yeah, holy crap, Miss made a great choice with like the trio, because I mean, if this is like what your average high schooler you know, is getting into with the practice, like, oh, uh, like, what, what the it, fuck? It, it like, kind of makes sense, because it's, like, yeah. he's, like, yeah, it's a classic story of, like, the doping thing or whatever, and, like, that, I mean, I don't, I mean, I'm not super I involved in the sports world. I would call this, but. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing, but yeah, like, no, it's it just, like, like, it's things that teenagers are, and people in general are going to do. Yeah. Um, But maybe teenagers are more prone to in a short-sighted way of, like, like i just i don't know i like i'm in law school as y'all know and i've i've spent a lot of time thinking about like really big concepts and like legal systems and like like all of these like big things and then i was like oh but this is like he's they're just thinking about this basketball game like they're just thinking yeah. about like because that's what is going on in their lives right now right and it's just yeah. like it makes so much sense but they're also like making these like really awful decisions well, it's like based I mean, on yeah your brain doesn't stop like fully developing until what like you're 26 or something mm -hmm. and so i mean yeah teenagers they make a lot of stupid choices i mean i was making a lot of stupid choices like i mean i still make stupid choices now but <laughs> can't blame on my brain anymore but <laughs> um no in all seriousness I, I feel like most people do kind of reckless things up into their at least early twenties. Um, mm -hmm. you know, it's not an uncommon thing. Um, so this is, it's just, it's really sad that, yeah, they just chose, I don't know, the thing they use to try to cheat, um, or like do something that a lot of kids would do just like ruined their life and ended someone's life. Um, right. I mean, not to mention, I don't know. It's just like, um, the, the guy that they, that he ate, was a kid that he used to bully and pick on, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like, that's just so awful. Really, like extra awful, you know. And then I the mean, fact that they get he gets away with it, you know. I mean, like yeah. it's when I you mean, know about the practice, you know that it wasn't actually him who chose to eat that kid. But there is like the weird thing where he had bullied him, and also he did choose to like be possessed by a nature spirit or whatever. And I, I like, I don't know that he necessarily, I don't know what anyone in this situation deserves, but it's awful. But then it's also like, oh, the like, you know, popular white, like, sports star just kind of gets off and like mm -hmm. gets bail and gets whatever without yeah. like these consequences. But then like, there are also these consequences that are like lifelong and it's just a horrible awful it's bad like, situation it's, it's awful for everyone because mm -hmm. everyone on the outside's like oh justice hasn't been served like this poor family of this kid that got eaten is like right. which it hasn't you know yeah right. which it hasn't but also at the same time he also has a fate that's kind of like worse than any jail or anything you could put him into and it mm -hmm. wasn't i mean like sure he tried to cheat but he sure didn't mean to, like, he didn't mean to do anything like that. <laughs> you know? Right. Um, so it's like, on one hand, justice wasn't served, but he's also getting, like, I don't know, punishment that's, like, almost, like, worse than he deserves. Cause, right. I mean, I, say, I would say that this punishment is bad, considering the fact that his thing was, like, trying to cheat at basketball. Yeah. Um, but then, like, I don't, oh, God, it's just so awful and hard. And indicative, like, I didn't realize this until we started talking about it, but this really fleshes out a lot of the themes in the other verse stories mm -hmm. in general, um, because there's both this, like, super privilege and the system is totally on Vic's side, but also, like, he's an other and so, and it's, like, not. And it's just this weird thing. And it's also just, like, imagining their relationship, like, these, like, two kids in high school. And he's even like, oh, yeah, Lacey cheated to get ahead. And, like, I didn't. And, like, I don't know that there's, like love or anything but then she did like bond him as familiar to try to help which seems good but it's also just like ugh, and like the spirit's getting stronger and they don't know why and i just just sucks yeah i mean there's gotta be a lot of resentment there i feel like because especially like 
I don't know. I feel like, oh, like, she's been cheating to get ahead. Like, you know, she's going to help me this one time for this one thing, like, to get better at basketball. Um, and yet all this bad stuff happens to him and she, nothing ever happened to her when she had cheated that whole time. You know, hmm. it's like, of course, well, the he, one time. <laughs> what was she that? did. I mean, they did do the whole spirit possession thing, like, more than just the one time they had done it. I guess that's true. But yeah. Yeah. It sucks. Well, I mean, I guess they don't teach kids not to get involved with being possessed, but that's also one of those things that you feel like you shouldn't have to teach kids. Maybe don't let someone possess your body. Yep. Not to mention that, you know, most people don't think that that's a thing. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, yeah. There's all the anyway. good pro tips on this podcast. <laughs> What was that? Good pro tips? Yeah. yeah. Guys, if you're thinking about it, don't Do try it. this at home, okay? <laughs> All right. Don't. Like, it's not worth it. Like, you're probably not going to go pro with basketball anyway. <laughs> so even if you do, don't get possessed. You know? It's not worth it. It's not worth it. <laughs> All right. Well, glad that we put that out into the world. Um, you know, gotta be careful. <laughs> Next, um, next we're moving on to Implementum. So, <laughs> yeah, a lot of this um, kind of went over, yeah, again, uh, the stone, wand, talisman, scepter, sword, and chalice. He also mentioned some other ones, um, but those are the ones he mainly went over. I did think it was, or, do, what did you think about Maggie looking at this section when she already has uh, an, an, an implement? Honestly, until you mentioned it. I wasn't thinking about these sections in that way, but like, yeah, that is, I think, what was happening and why we read this in the same way as like we were reading what Verona was reading. Mm -hmm. Pale extra materials. Mm. I mean, maybe she was trying to understand the implements that other people had and like what they said about like their socio cultural place and like what, you know, mm. like what does Laird's implement say about him or something like that? Because yeah, she doesn't really, she can't, it's not takesy backsies, I don't think. Yeah. Um, and so that was interesting. And that's, yeah. Okay. Let me see. I saw you wrote a couple notes about the stone, because of course that's like, um. I just really like the rock. I'm just like, <laughs> this rock. I like it. It was happy that it came back. I was happy, like, I mean, it's funny because it's not like the stone came back. It's like it came back in pale, you know? But like, yeah. he just has such antipathy for the stone. And, like, the voice of these authors was, like, the same, which was really fun. I mean, because it should be, but just, like, the, like, hey, me, me, eh, the stone is so dumb. <laughs> me, why would you I mean, literally ever? It starts out with, like, the stone is, of course, not an implement anyone would choose. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, wow, that's throwing a lot of shade there. <laughs> um, but, uh, and, like, maybe you're right, but, like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like yeah i don't know fair enough i mean what if you chose a paperweight is that going to be different <laughs> what about like just like a hunk of gold or something is that a stone i guess maybe not it's a shiny stone shiny 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 you could put teeth marks into it which i mean you shouldn't i don't know why that's the first thing i thought of with a hunk yeah. of gold but i actually yeah. had a dream the other night where like i found what i thought was gold like gold bars and I just like bit like not, not I didn't bite it off but like I took like a huge bite out of it and left these nice. really ugly <laughs> chew marks and then it, it wasn't even my gold I had to give it back and was like yeah sorry <laughs> I just wanted to see I wanted to check and see if it was real <laughs> yeah um, That's so, good. so use restraint it's another lesson people when biting into gold bars that aren't yours try not to take a real big bite because that's going to be real awkward. You yes. try to give that back. Okay. Yes. Um, <laughs> the last thing about this implementum text before we move on, I haven't mentioned this to Johnny. I've started to learn about tarot hmm. in large part because of this book. Um, when people were talking about like Avery using the cards, like Nicolette had kind of showed her to try to figure out the bells and people were like, Oh, blah, blah, blah. Like this means this. And she doesn't have a full, deck because she doesn't have like the major arcana and like the minor arcana is slightly different and blah 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 and i was like what's going mm. on i decided to be fun to learn slash i also want to learn how to draw and i really like 
the tarot style. I always think okay. it's really neat when people, when there are those like tarot looking pictures that people do. Anyway. This is random too. That's cool. Yeah, you, you haven't told me that. But anytime someone talks about tarot cards or anything like that, I just think of the tarot plant, um, <laughs> which is very different. And then I think about how I haven't had poi in a long time. Yeah. And I seem to only really crave it when I'm pregnant. And yet I'm pregnant oh, no. again. Oh, um, no. And, but at least yeah, you're going home. <laughs> I'm, I get to go home next month which is going to be exciting for the flight and everything um but i feel okay because i'm because we're all vaccinated but that's not going to be a fun flight but no. anyway i get to go get some poi you're gonna get poi so um yay right but all the right. reason i brought up tarot which i think yes, also sorry. might have a slightly different pronunciation that i don't fully know like tarot or something anyway is as i'm looking at these implements one, two, three. Three of the ones listed here are like the different like suits, basically hmm. in tarot. So wand, sword, and chalice. And like I don't think talisman is, but maybe it could be used for pentacles because that's whatever. And also there's a lot of different interpretations or whatever, but I've been like thinking about them a lot because like I'm starting to see stuff pop up everywhere, which is fun. Like I'm wondering how much of like my fantasy whatever is just like inspired from these sorts of things um mm -hmm. but like wands and swords um so wand is like the fire element one and also it's one of the masculine energy things and then like sword is as well and it represents air and then chalice is one of the feminine ones along with pentacles and chalice is water and pentacles which is just like a star is earth mm -hmm. um and it just like alexander like ever since the the pale implement reading like alexander has a wand and it's just so fucking perfect because it's just like so masculine and so performative and so like ooh, i'm subtle and artsy and like just super like <laughs> it's a dick like it's just so like good and it, it just like has gotten me more excited to think about uh, a lot of the other stuff mm -hmm. um oh cool i yeah. i don't think i would have thought about all that so um i know nothing about tarot cards except that yeah the art style is pretty cool and um they seem dramatic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we'll move on to the domain section as well. Um, so let me see. Start chapter nine, which is first steps in one's place of power. Um, and they also go over um, kind of throughout the chapter. They use Fiona as an example as well. The, the big thing I picked out of this one that I hadn't fully realized before or just sort of stood out was like the domain changes a lot. Mm. Whereas like the implement, your implement seems a lot more set in stone to me. It seemed like part of why your implement is such a big deal is because it like shapes you and your practice. And then like it's set that way forever. Kind of like Lucy can like try to help make her diagrams work a little bit better, but in general, like it's set. Whereas like the domain really reflects yourself like and how you're doing like how strong you are what you're feeling like everything that's going on and like because you can like manipulate it so much it is like manipulated by how you are doing and then there's your familiar which like impacts you but like you also impact your familiar i like maybe that's kind of like the midpoint one hmm. but it just seemed really striking to me for some reason reading this that like it was like, oh, Fiona gets her domain, but then like she's weak and she feels shitty because she had to like fight to keep this and she needs to like do certain things to like build it back up and like be okay and remember that like, you know, this wasn't the end point, but also she can kind of celebrate now unless she like lets it go to shit or whatever. Yeah. The other thing that I thought was funny uh, that I noticed was she's an obstetrics nurse, which is like babies, right? Mm -hmm. so and she... Yeah, and um, or like pregnancy, right? Specifically, yeah. But I mean, so, like, yeah, not I, after the baby has come out. It's like when the baby's still inside. Um. So for OB, um, you can work um in the labor and delivery and or postpartum. Um. So labor hmm. and delivery, it's delivery, <laughs> labor and delivery. Um, is like taking care of the mom and the baby, like during labor and after uh, the baby's 
born, um, at, like directly after the baby's born, um, postpartum is, yeah, taking care of, I guess, mom and baby a, a bit after they're more stabilized, like once they're, yeah, after the baby's born, you're kind of watching the mom and the baby for a bit. So it's a bit of both. Cool. Yeah. But yeah, it was just kind of funny because I didn't, I picked it up the second time that she's an OB nurse and she makes her domain into a womb. And I was like, ew. Yeah, that's a little, <laughs> uh, that's a little funky. Um, I can guarantee as an, I mean, everyone's practice is different. Everyone's life is different. Um, I do not think I would make my domain nursing related <laughs> whatsoever. No. Because, <laughs> yeah, like, where have I, I mean, I've worked in a few different spots. Like, one was like a surgical trauma step down unit, and then I worked in the emergency room for a bit, and now I work in interventional radiology, where I very carefully drug people up. Um, <laughs> so, I don't think I would want any aspect of that at my home. But, hmm. you know, yeah, like, if she finds, I guess, placenta's cozy, uh, <laughs> you know. Never mind. Did I tell that fun fact? I think I did already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this would have been a great episode to share the um, placenta cheesecake fact. But um, just to remind you guys, that's where the name came that's from. That's thing. <laughs> yeah, that's disgusting. But, you know, that's cool. Some people are into that. I mean, I guess, I mean, the baby finds it, you know, like your womb and everything cozy. But you'd think after you, like, get out of there, you don't really want to go back. Or just, like, you don't want to eat it. <laughs> you know what? A lot of people do. But, like, you know, you can also get it powdered in a powdered form and put into capsules if you don't want to fry it up. I mean, some people bury it, like, in their I backyard. I can't decide if the capsules is worse than frying it up. I mean, I feel like frying it up would be worse, because then you don't have to think about what's in the capsule. You can just pretend it's, like, a vitamin. I mean, I don't really... I wouldn't do either one, but I know it's a big cultural thing. Sometimes... It is like a, you know, some people feel real strongly about that, which I feel like is totally fine. Not for me, you know, but yeah. if you want to eat your placenta or if you want to dig a hole and bury it or like whatever, I would just say if you're going to dig a hole and bury it, make sure you dig it deep enough. That's a good spot, yeah. And that too, because like you don't want a dog or raccoon or something coming by and digging up your placenta. Right. Um, You want to dig that deep. But yeah. It's not for me. I know some people, like, some people will do that. That's totally fine. Making your living area into a, a womb. <laughs> I mean, do you have, like, a, I don't know. I just have questions about what else. <laughs> but, um, it's like a big feminine chalice energy. Yeah. Thinking about tarot. <laughs> okay. I was like, uh, sure. It also sort of feels like Freud. I don't know. Uh, Freud was just pretty jacked up too but you know he um, influenced a lot of literature that even he if sure, he didn't know anything about our brains <laughs> he sure did i mean and you know still did advance the field in ways even if a lot of those ways kind of full of crap but you know okay. yeah if you had a domain malia like would you try to make Which it like body part would i make it like Oh, I wasn't even going that far. I was gonna, I was gonna tie it back to your like future profession, but because mm. uh, I, I would assume that that's where you would be going with that. <laughs> um, but sure, what body part would you choose <laughs> to fashion it after? You know, the brain, the mm. I don't know. Would you make it like, so like not the heart, right? Because I feel like the beating would get annoying. Sure. Um, and similarly, like the lungs, it feels like it'd be too windy. Okay. Which could be refreshing, but also, like, if you're, like, walking around and it's just, like, woo, woo, woo. <laughs> that seems annoying. Uh, I was like, how Stomach would be dangerous. Like, are you familiar with lung sounds? Anyway. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> Not really. That's fine. Um, sorry, go ahead. I need I mean, to know like, where you'd pick now. Ears have too much earwax. Okay. Like, maybe my eyes, right? Uh, okay. See really well. I have a pretty eye color. So, um, like, would everything just look like a giant eyeball staring at you, or would you be in the no, inside I'm, I'm of in the, the eye? in the eyeball. I stare at you. Mm. 
that's creepy as fuck. <laughs> but, I know. I mean, it's like all a body creepy. part that's not, but also is useful. Yeah, that's be a like, good point. Oh, yes, my tibia, but like, why? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it could could be inside a bone. Um, could be. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard to find like a body part that's not going to be somewhat noisy as well, just because like <laughs> you're getting blood supplied, and so like at least I don't know. It depends on you're going to hear a little <gasps> bit. Oh wait, I want it to be like. This is weird. I want it. I want my like my like veins and arteries so that I could like sit on like blood cells and like go around like. Wee! Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <you're> <laughs> what? <laughs> you know, like a lazy river, but like faster. <laughs> so you just so you just want a water park for your yeah. domain. So you want some inner tubes and things that you can cut, kind of go around. So you, you might don't... have to pick a body part. <laughs> <laughs> you so you want to be like. Capillary. My blood system. Your blood system. Okay. Whatever that's called. All right. I mean, you know, that's... I, I mean, feel like I my heart lungs that. and stuff can be in there, too, because that'd be a fun, like, woo, like, oh, the beating, <laughs> oh, the rapids, like. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, we should have made that a discussion question. If you had to pick a <laughs> domain, too late. that's true. All right, well, we'll see at the end that we'll, we may ask you that, so don't be shocked, because now I want to know where everyone would pick. Um, <laughs> all right. Okay. If we don't have anything else to say about that, let's move on to the slightly more heart shattering section. Um, <laughs> so to start off, Maggie starts trying to deal with Blake and Rose and they end up getting on the topic of Molly and seeing if Maggie knew her, which she says she didn't really know her. Yeah. Um, I think both Blake and I are going to be super paranoid and bitter by the end of this story. And that sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, um, although it's not... I don't know. I still have hope, which I think is like part of the trauma that I'm about to experience. <laughs> or not about to, but that I will experience over the course of this podcast. Because I still have a little bit of hope and optimism left optimism. in my heart. Yeah. I mean, we'll but see. this is only arc two, so it's good. It can't be totally sucked dry at this point. Yeah, the one of the first things I noticed is like Rose and Maggie have big Katara Toph energy, like from that one episode toward the beginning huh. of ne- Toph joining the journey, where they're just like bickering and arguing the whole time, and Katara's kind of like the older person who's annoyed with like the little scamp who doesn't get the whatever because Rose like is not having Maggie this whole time. <laughs> it's pretty funny. I you know what I I didn't. I don't think that I would that would have clicked for me before, but you're totally right. That's hilarious. That, that, yeah, yeah, totally does give Katara like tough energy for sure. Yeah, yeah and I think like, <laughs> I mean, they got better, so maybe these two can. But it, there's a lot of obstacles. True. <laughs> Although Rose didn't give a fuck about Molly, so maybe it'll be fine. <laughs> uh, <Okay>. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I know. Um, yeah, and then Maggie saying like, "Yeah, if you promise to give me these books and shit, I'll promise not to kill you." It was like, "Whoa!" Like, whoa! I know, like, I feel like you could threaten, or you could phrase that a little better. You know, and she was like, "What?" And it was like even more depressing after realizing that she may or may not have killed Molly, and like, yeah. and she wants the deal to not be killed because she did help kill molly like she won't qualify for the like tell me who did it deal necessarily unless yeah. i'm sort of right but we'll get there eventually hmm, okay oh, i'm um, curious to see what you'll say about that but yeah it was funny rereading it and parsing some of the language because when they're like can you tell what happened maggie like can't you and she's like well i didn't know and then <laughs> She's like, I could tell you what happened, but then I'm probably going to wind up with some rather angry people coming after me. And I was just like, lol, like they're sitting right <laughs> fucking there. Like, like so yeah. Funny. Like, yes. It's because they're sitting in front of you. <laughs> I know, that was pretty um, good. <laughs> yeah. I, and then we just keep getting like, like Molly didn't go to the meetings and I wonder why. And then like, and then she finally did. And I wonder why, like maybe the lawyers were kind of convinced her to or something. Or she felt like too cornered because one of the things was like, you have to go to the meetings and it's I mean, I don't know if she just like didn't 
look around the house for a really long time and didn't find the letter. But I, like, I am feeling more confident that we're going to figure out like a full picture of Molly and what happened to her. Because hmm. we just keep getting these little breadcrumbs. Yeah, we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> yeah. Um, but basically next, um, Maggie opens up a bit about her backstory and her chosen specialty, essentially. Yeah, so this was actually, like, my low point for Maggie in, like, in the chapter. Mm. I'm like, I kind of get it, but I really don't like the way she talks about goblins. Okay. And this might be, like, I'm coming from Pale, where, like, you know, it's Toad Swallow and Cherry Pop. And, like, Blunt is kind of scary, but we don't see the scary things he does. And then, like, Gashwad, who just, like, wants to, like, you know be who he's born to or like not who he's born to be gashwad wants to like transcend the boundaries and do the thing and then like mm-hmm. doglick is just like great and weird and like that they're just like like real gross i mean like pecker snot like oh like i don't want to be around them because they're gross but mm-hmm. i would hang out with pecker snot and like toad swallow cherry would annoy me after like two and a half seconds but you know <laughs> like cherry is a person and i hate when Maggie is just like, yes, seal them, bind them, enslave them. Like, no, 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 no. Like, like, no. Like, okay. like, Maggie doesn't see that. Maggie needs to learn not that just like goblins are people, but that like humans are people. Like, Maggie needs to like stop seeing people as just like means to an end. And I know that like that's what she's been trained to do. And she's been like really hurt. And like, no one will like help her out. And everything is like transactional. And like, you know, her entire town was destroyed by goblins, and that's bad. But, like, just because some de- goblins destroyed your town doesn't mean you should enslave all goblins. Hmm, okay. I, th- I think it's kind of interesting you're pulling Maggie in terms of seeing people as a means to an end. In Because, ter- I mean, I don't know, comparing it with other practitioners in the town. Like... I, I don't know that Maggie... Like, I expected more, I think... But I also, Maggie doesn't have anyone else except for her, like, quote unquote, dads, whoever they are. Um, I mean, like, she seemed fine with her goblins. But I just, I hope that, like, a lot of these people love their children. And, oh, God, but they're practitioners. Fuck, I don't know. Um, (laughs) I, I'm not saying that Maggie's worse. I think, I think that Maggie has, like, potential. Like, Laird doesn't have potential. (laughs) Like, Laird is not. Uh I'm okay. gonna turn around and suddenly be like, "Wow, well, I was wrong!" Like <laughs> by the end of the story, whereas Maggie like has the potential to like change and grow and be better, and it just like makes me really upset. Like the Ted's, I mean, the Ted's weren't traumatized by goblins, but the Ted's seem to really, you know, like goblins and care about them and try to treat them well. Like Liberty in particular, we saw a lot of her really trying to treat goblins well, whereas mm-hmm. like the way Maggie is talking about them she wants to take out her anger and her like desire for revenge on any of the goblins she finds. And that sucks. Mm -hmm. I mean, so far the goblins in pact haven't been like fun and lovely. They've been more on the like blunt munch making dog meat side with roses diary. And with this story Mm -hmm. with Maggie but it's real sad. Okay. Yeah, I'll be interested to see um, <laughs> what you think going on, I guess. Because I, I, I do see what you're saying, for sure. I mean, but this is still, like, relatively in the beginning. So we'll see, like, where Maggie goes and where, mm-hmm. um, you know, what we see of goblins. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. She calls Johannes a sorcerer, and I'm like, I don't know what that is. Like, was I? am I supposed to know what that is? I don't remember. <laughs> what is this man? <laughs> I mean, I feel uh, like you just, other people call him that, so she's like, that's what I'm going to call him. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, I'm also surprised that she seems to know what Rose is, because she doesn't know as much about things. But, I like, everyone seems to know that Rose is a vestige. Maybe it's not that hard to figure out, and maybe just someone told her. I mean, I'm guessing, I mean, kind of wonder what it it looks like in the site, you know. Oh, interesting. Yeah, Blake doesn't use the site enough. No, but he also doesn't have a lot of power. That's true. 
but yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> I still need, I don't know. I still don't know what is up with Blake's site or if like all sites are just sort of like that. And it's the kind of tiers who are weird because they got like supercharged and personalized. Whereas Blake is just like, I see shiny things sometimes. I mean, they did like have, they did have like a bunch of Carmine influence and stuff. Like, right. right. So. I mean, Carmine influence, and like power from the others i guess but they just they were very personalized and individualized and scary mm. yeah like you're saying maggie seems to know what rose is and rose is kind of like uh eh, we'd rather not talk about that because it's a sore point which blake's kind of surprised that she said that yeah the first time i read it i was confused that blake was confused and the second time i read it i was confused by what the fuck rose was talking about yeah <laughs> i'm just curious as to what you have to say about this because i was confused me yeah um i mean i feel i feel like at this point it's kind of obvious that like rose definitely has some like negative feelings about it how she's just acting at the same time it's not like she's really being an open book with communication Mm -hmm. like for me i mean uh, yeah like if you can definitely tell like she's the female version of him in a way um (laughs) in terms of like they're not fucking communicating with each other it's not like one of them's really good at it and the other one sucks like they both suck at it. So, um, Blake doesn't, I mean, I don't know. Other, aside from like extreme moments of trauma that Blake has gone through, what is he not communicating with Rose? I guess that's fair. I mean, I arguably, I like, guess this is an extreme moment of trauma, but it sucks that she can't talk to him about it. Well, like, I guess it's more, maybe more like they're both choosing to keep the other one I don't know. They're 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 choosing certain things to not share on purpose. Yeah. You know? Maybe I, it's not I don't know. I I almost feel like Rose thinks that Blake gets it. Like I think that Rose thinks that Blake should understand and get it. Mm-hmm. Um, because she's just like, well, obviously this is how I feel. Like I don't think she's like it's occurred to her necessarily to be like hey, Blake, like, I'm going to be vulnerable for a second. Like, this is really hard. And I feel like I'm blaming you in a way that's not fair. Yeah. Um, I mean, they haven't known each other for that long. You know, they kind of just have to, like, we're thrown into this situation. And there's a lot of resentment on both sides. Rose, I mean, is stuck in this mirror and Mm -hmm. can't really do anything. But at the same time, Blake, like, is the one who has to put himself at risk. You know, not really a great, like environment to like be bffs you know yep so yeah maggie keeps trying to attempt to make a deal they she almost kind of gets them to say or just like do like a verbal deal and blake's like nope i want it in writing because i am too fucking tired to think and i want to make sure (laughs) that i can talk with rose and like actually write it out yeah and maggie being like oh there'll be more loopholes like doesn't make sense because like the words would be have the same effect written or spoken. And so I think that like, if you're going to say the things out loud, you might as well write them down. Like I was just like, fuck yeah, Blake, like statute of frauds, like write yeah. that shit down, yeah. <laughs> um, which I can explain if we want, but it's sure. not that exciting. Oh, uh, well, so um, in some States, certain contracts have to be written down for those contracts to be legally enforceable in a court. Hmm. Um, so I'm thinking like sale of goods for, Five hundred dollars or more. Fuck. There's a. It's my foot. Ma- marriage. Yeah. Is this the acronym? <laughs> I have to land it for the bar, but oh, I'll put I was it like, here. Is your foot okay? <laughs> um. Or my. I think it's my foot or my feet. Fuck. I'm embarrassing myself. Anyway. I mean, my foot. I don't think anyone's gonna else. hold that against you. Like, oh, you don't remember the foot acronym? Oh my gosh. Well, my, we my contract professor said like two or three things about feet in a weird way that made us sort of think maybe he had a foot fetish or maybe he was sort of joking or maybe he didn't realize what he was saying. And so that's why I keep thinking, maybe, no, is it my feet? Fuck. Maybe it's not that at all. I'm sorry. Statute of frauds. Basically, try to get contracts in writing. The funny thing is like the contract itself is still exists and is still valid, but you can't enforce it in court, which like practically means that it's not valid, but like yeah. it is legally technically valid. And there are certain ways to kind of huh. maybe get around it, but there are also not That sounds kind of annoying. Ways. Yeah. Um, but it's to like prevent fraud, but it's often really dumb. Um hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's but like speaking of me being proud of uh because I'm a lawyer. Um I'm not a lawyer, but being proud <laughs> We're getting of getting there. Um <laughs> Rose was like, 
I so swear that we have no intention to like summon or use these demons. And I was like, fuck yeah, Rose. Like, I know that trick. Like, <laughs> like literally, this is what Laird pulled, I think, in like 1.5 or whatever, when he was like, I have no intention of fucking you over. And then it's, or like, whatever. And then it was like, oh, but I came up with one. Like, it's just like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like literally like they could totally change their minds and i'm just like y'all are gonna fucking change your minds and i'm not excited but so excited <laughs> uh, that's awesome but it was really great because maggie was like okay i was like maggie you're stupid <laughs> <laughs> you didn't make them say they wouldn't and like they're not gonna say they wouldn't because maybe they have to but just yeah i don't know hey she's her brain's still developing yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so is theirs true yeah it maggie just like wants power so badly and like i guess i kind of get it it sucks to feel like you're being stepped on she doesn't have like those family connections she's really young and i mean mm -hmm. i guess the biggest thing is like she felt powerless when her home was being destroyed is probably like the biggest thing but it's frustrating kind of that she's just so single-mindedly focused on it I mean, kind of makes sense, though. Yeah. Like, even just looking at the other, um, like, going back to Pale, um, obviously our protagonists, like, all have a ton of power. But, like, looking mm -hmm. at, like, the school and stuff, like, how um, they drew that pretty simple, like, rune diagram and put their own power into, like, their own selves into it and then we're fine. But that one guy they teamed up with, like, <laughs> like totally got knocked out you know yeah, so we, yeah. um yeah and and he's from you know it's from a practitioner family right and mm -hmm. maggie again like you said she's like pretty much on her own as far as we know mm -hmm. um and i feel like you know once you are a practitioner like you awake you're pretty vulnerable if you don't have power yeah because like there's you're not you don't have those innocent protections anymore right so it's like in order to do anything or to protect yourself or your family or anything like that. Like, you need power. It's, you almost could say, like, it's, like, a need. Like, you probably could add that to, like, <laughs> it's like Maslow's I, I, like, hierarchy of needs or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Like, Maslow's hierarchy of needs could probably add, like, a, make a special practitioner one. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> um, it's like. That'd also be a fun discussion question. Hmm. Possibly. I haven't formulated an actual question in my mind, but yeah, I, I mean, ugh, I haven't studied this in such a long time, which is, I mean, I had to look at, we had to memorize this in nursing school, but it's been a while, huh. but yeah, it's like there's physiological needs at the bottom. I'm looking this up because I'm totally, yeah. <laughs> um, and the next is safety needs, then belonging and love needs, um, then esteem, and then self-actualizations at the top. So you need the physiological needs first, and then your safety needs. So I would, I mean, and like the physiological and safety are both basic needs. So I would say for a practitioner, power would probably fit into, into basic needs because you need mm. it for safety at the very least. Um, Interesting. So that's where I would put it. Yeah, that's know. fair. I, I think it's just like the way she's going about it feels very um I mean and, it's and kind of or? well definitely unethical but they all are I think it's it's yeah. more just like she feels kind of desperate in a way that makes people be like oh okay like Blake and Rose are obviously super desperate for power mm -hmm. but they're not like grubbing for it in the same way it just it feels very young and yeah. like understandable and I don't know what else she can necessarily do I mean it just makes so much sense how she like made a whole bunch of small deals to like get a hit on molly or whatever it's just like real yeah sad and frustrating yeah. and i feel like you know just like blake and rose wouldn't have done that um that we know of at least i mean yeah we, rose we, we maybe don't know blake, what her no. situation was <laughs> yeah right sure sure but i mean i feel like blake would resist that as much as he could whereas yeah. rose would be yeah, more open to it <laughs> true but you know someone is desperate enough especially with that Maslow's <laughs> going back to that, like mm -hmm. if you don't have safety slash if you don't have food, water, any of that stuff, like just if we're, you know, comparing, if we're putting that into that section, like mm -hmm. you can get pretty desperate. Um, mm -hmm. You can start eating things you wouldn't have considered eating before. You might consider mm -hmm. doing things for that safety for you or your family that you wouldn't have considered doing before if you're mm -hmm. desperate enough. So 
I'm just saying, we don't know what Maggie's position was to take that. Right. So we may find out, we may not find out, but just. Sort of speaking of, one of the things that she got from that was this like origami trap for an mm-hmm. other. Mm-hmm. And at first I was like, oh, cool, Eastern practice. Like, yeah, yeah, like other cultures. But then it was also like, oh, fuck these guys. Like, no wonder the Oni formed. Like, <laughs> like. <laughs> it's not even like you're like my pet that eats at my table it's like oh you're my like monster that i put in this box like it just like yeah. and i like leash them outside and i treat them like shit like i just like oh like that sucks yeah no for real yeah and then you do you made a little note about how they were talking about semantics <laughs> yeah it i mean because it calls back to i just i don't get why rose didn't like Paige and molly because she she seems like she would and that's why I think that grandma kind of fucked with her memories. But, you know, she's saying something or Blake is talking about the hatchet and then Maggie calls it an axe and Rose corrects her and Maggie goes semantics, just like Molly did um, to Paige. Mm-hmm. And Rose is like, hey, this is really fucking important. <laughs> <laughs> and it just like it made Blake think about Paige and made me think about Paige and Molly. And I just like. It was like, oh my gosh, call Paige, except don't, except I miss her. Need <laughs> <laughs> some fellow law people. Yeah. Or just, or just she's great. nice people. Yeah. Yeah. I do think that Paige might be a little bit too cocky for this universe. It's fascinating. Blake is not very cocky, but he just like fucking kills it. Like he just is like a little shit and he's like really sarcastic and he just like, he just nails it constantly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's pretty sweet. Yeah, like I feel like Paige would like fuck up once and then just like freak out, which maybe is why Grandma Rose didn't want her to have it. But like, mm-hmm. she's got to be better than like the six year old or whatever. I just I don't get it. <laughs> that would be so so shitty to like pass it to the six year old. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But all right. Well, next. Um, so Maggie basically cont- continues to attempt to make a deal. Kind of is like debating with Rose a bit. Laird ends up showing up um, <laughs> to confront Blake about the letter. And he tells what happened to Molly. Dun, 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 dun. Fucking Laird. Yeah, I guess before we talk about Laird, I, it clicked finally that Grandma was meeting people in her bedroom in the first chapter of the story, not in like a study or whatever. And I'm, for some reason, I just didn't picture it as a bedroom, even though they, I think oh. they were like, she's literally lying down in bed. In I don't bed. know why. I just didn't at all <laughs> okay. understand what was going on. And it was just like the locket with the lavender... And he's like, I could see her doing it for some practice reason. And I could see her doing it for the smell alone. And I was like, it's because she made a deal with Barbatora <laughs> mm. to extend her life in exchange for smelling dog shit for the rest of her life. <laughs> uh. <laughs> that was exciting. And it was just really sweet that Blake wanted to return the gift. I mean, it could have been like practice and like, you know, like not like Blake doesn't like owing people things mm-hmm. and like the debt. But arguably, like, I don't know, they had taken maggie in to like and showed them showed her books and stuff um so maybe she kind of owed them that present but also it was a hospitality thing i don't know it was just like it felt we didn't really get into blake's head at this point he didn't explain what he was doing he just like went and grabbed a locket and stuff Mm -hmm. it was really sweet and like he was gonna give some of his glamour to this girl and it just like i don't know it was just really and like in, in a nice cute way it was just i don't know it was nice yeah makes me sad Fucking and like, Laird. Fucking Laird. <laughs> but also, like, Laird sort of helps him out, but also, like, fucks with his head, you know? Like, I feel like telling them what was going on was good, except it's just going to make them bitter and not trust anything. Yeah, and, I mean, he didn't do it for a good reason. Right. But, like, I feel like, like, a lesser story would have had Maggie become, like, a good friend, and then, like, later it would have been revealed that this was what happened, and then it would have been, like, a super betrayal, and, like, mm, I mean, that can mm-hmm. that can work, or whatever. But it's like that Freddy, one like... rom-com with Freddie Prince Jr. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you know what I'm talking about? I do. I do. <laughs> What's that story called? The painting in the basement with the mom. Um, um, she's, she's all, all that? that? Yeah. 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 It's like, oh, she's so ugly, because she wears glasses, and then, <laughs> oh, she turns her glasses off, and now she's super hot and beautiful. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah. It, what what movie was, was another teen movie, right? Where they make fun of that? 
I think so. I didn't actually see that, but yes, I, I think I've seen I really that scene. Because like they definitely were like, I mean, it, they've totally made fun of that like so much. They're like, oh, she's wearing glasses and like she has overalls and paint on them. What an ugly, you know, <laughs> just like. <laughs> Uh, uh, it's probably not as good of a parody as I remember, but I remember thinking it was hilarious. So, uh. <laughs> and I, I also I like she, she's all that. Um, oh, I do too. But like, but it, it's fun. It to is watch. very problematic. Like, yeah, and I mean, sometimes it's fun to watch parodies about you know content that you still like. You know? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Although I don't know what other verse parody would look like. I don't feel like I. That would be a hard sell. Well, it's it's fourteen dot twelve. I don't even know if I'd call that a parody. <laughs> I mean, it was just an amazing April Fool's joke that was like making fun of Marvel mm. and shit. I don't even I don't mm. know if I'd call that a parody on the other verse itself. But maybe, yeah. I don't think I, I don't think we're ready for that anyway. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. I just so back to Laird. I love yes. how he's like exasperated by this whole thing. But then it just turns into like him being a dick again. Like at first it was just like, this is really funny because he's just like, ugh. but then it turns into like sanctim- sanctimony, sanctimoniousness. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, fuck you, Laird. Like at first it was like, yeah, it's kind of funny. He's like, Bleh. Mm-hmm. um, and he's like, I don't believe anymore that you're not going to fuck with demons. And it was like, fuck you. Like he sent you a letter. What? Bleh. <laughs> like, <laughs> Bleh. <laughs> I mean, it's it's not like unexpected that I mean, obviously who's gonna do something, right? I just love how Blake's like, I'm so tired that like, I see I don't give a crap right to now. appear to give a fuck. Like, yeah. That's so powerful. <laughs> I wanna channel that as a law student. <laughs> Seems really useful. Having that poker face. So Laird is like, I'm pretty sure you're gonna regret this, like coming against me. What do you think he's gonna do? Um well, he can't you're, necessarily you're like, get into the house. Why did you tell house. me? Ask me this. What was that? <laughs> like he can't necessarily get in the house. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, he's gonna do something to try to get him out of the house or to like fuck up any potential ties he has. But he already sort of just did that. Mm-hmm. Maybe he'll send the witch hunters in um, mm. to be like, "Hey, don't." Hmm. I guess we'll have to see. Best guess I have. Sending the witch hunters in. Yeah, because they can get into his house. (laughs) Can they do that before the council meeting? The witch hunters? Well, in terms of like voting people and stuff, or am I just thinking about it? I I mean, I thought I mean I thought they could enter even if they weren't going to execute you. Oh, I guess. What What do you think the witch like? They're just going to come in and like fuck with them. And just, like, be fucking cops and just be like, meh, don't do it, meh, and then, like, leave. Mm, okay. That was a good I mean, I guess uh, there'll have to be some invitation. more of a consequence <laughs> <laughs> than just literally, like, like meh. But, yeah, um, that's definitely what I what they sound like in my head. Yeah, it'll have to canon. involve yeah. them in some way. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna... <laughs> uh, all right, well, anyway. <laughs> so, then we get to... Yeah, the whole thing where Laird's like, I am not taking your deal. Anything I tell, I do not want anything from you by telling you this. Um, and he's like, Maggie did it. <laughs> well, okay, so he <laughs> literally says she ordered them to strike Mo- Molly and then leave her alive. So mm-hmm. I'm like, it seems like if the goblins did kill Molly, it wasn't because Maggie told them to? And, like, either something just, like, went wrong and it was a mistake, or something else happened. Like, orchestrated the attack doesn't mean the attack that killed her. And, I mean, it sucks that she did it, and they're all shitheads, and it sucks. But she even says, like, that she tried to take it back. And then and he's like, oh, we were all really, like, upset when it went so poorly. And I'm like, do you mean when it went poorly because it didn't work? Because she didn't die, and then you had to fucking kill her. Like I just like they don't want Molly alive. They didn't want Molly to live. They didn't want her around. They didn't want her alive. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe the Bahames do because they want to deal with Johannes first. But like that didn't make sense. <laughs> Especially like the whole like we're gonna pay you to like torture this girl and then then 
leave her alive for reasons. I don't know, man. Interesting. It was also just like, she was like, oh, can I have a minute to explain? And Blake was like, you can have five. No, you can have ten minutes. And she was like, fuck. Like, <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> yeah, she's like, okay, I didn't expect <laughs> you to say yes. <laughs> and it was also really sweet because he does say, yeah, please explain. Like, yeah, here, like, please do it. Because he's like wonderful and pure and great. And he's really trying to like, you know, hold himself together. And then Maggie's just like, lol, oops. <laughs> but then she's like, it's complicated. I'm like, just fucking tell him. But she probably swore something that she can't something i don't know and i just and she tried to call it off and i just and then just the thing where he's like he thinks about hospitality he thinks about the spirits when he like grabs her hand and like squeezes it really hard and then he like yeah. kisses her hand which is just such a like fucking like big dick energy right there like yeah. right in front of laird who's like he he and he's like look laird like i'm gracious like <laughs> like i enjoyed your company maggie until i didn't <laughs> until i didn't and and you can uh... leave now but also like I don't know. He's just such a good practitioner, and it's also just like a. I know. It's and Laird just <laughs> fucking stands there the whole time. Like fuck Laird. I just I hate Laird. <sighs> yeah, Laird sucks. Yeah, I'm waiting for Laird's like interlude where it's like, oh wow, Laird, you're an angel. <laughs> <laughs> I understand you now. <laughs> it's gonna be like, what do you think you'll be more like? What what which one's gonna be harder for you to buy? Laird's interlude showing he's a good person. Or Brett's interlude. Brett. Yeah, you're totally right. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not much of a question. All right. Are we ready for your bold and specific prediction? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. So I was basically just sort of saying this, but my bold and specific prediction is that Maggie isn't really responsible for Molly's death. I think that maybe Maggie thinks that she is, but I think that right. someone or something else actually killed Molly. Um mm-hmm. And, like, maybe it's just that, like, it was an accident and her goblins went too far or something. But it kind of feels like, like, no one was like, yeah, Maggie did it. It was like Maggie ordered an attack on Molly. And I think Molly thinks that she did it. Or Maggie thinks that she did it. Their names are the same. Um, <laughs> okay. But, yeah. All right. Um, any, just to push it further, um, any thoughts about who did who or what did it? Yeah. No. Okay, that's fine. I mean, it's kind of a hard question. Um, I mean, I just, like, I want to say, like, the Bahames or the Duchamps or whatever, but, like, they want the balance until they can get rid of Johannes. So, like, maybe Johannes? I don't know. Okay. Also, just as a random question, are you saying you think that... Because looking at the descriptions of Molly's body and everything, right? It was saying that it looked like she'd been partially eaten, like there were some tools used... Do you think any of those were done by the goblins? Or do you think that that was uh, mostly whatever actually killed her? Or do you think it's some of both? Uh, I mean, I I kind of think that maybe the goblins were, like, torturing her. Okay. And that something else came along and kind of ate her. Okay. So, sorry, I'm not trying to, like, get really <laughs> gross over, over this. But, like, so you think, like, the, the marks of tools and everything... Um, we're from the go- goblins yeah. and everything else, like <laughs> bite marks and or whatever the hell there was, was from what actually killed her. Yeah. Okay. I can see like, I mean, I can almost see like they did the torture and then they left her there and then something else came along. which was just like, ooh, <laughs> food. Mm, okay. Or something. Um, okay. But I'm not, I don't know. I don't know. y'all. <laughs> hey, it's all right. We like it. It's a good, <laughs> good prediction. I hope so. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Even some of the ones that haven't been right, like, you know, if, if if it can still be a good prediction and not be right, you know. I'm not saying if this is right or not. But. Yeah, I mean, if I was right all the time, it wouldn't be fun. Like, yeah. it wouldn't be, like, exciting to find out what happens next. Exactly. Get monotonous. So, like, Emily has gotten getting her tarot cards out again. She's going to guess exactly <laughs> what's going to <laughs> um, It's funny with Wild Bow. Slash, it's funny right now with um, where we are in Pale, we're like ramping up into a big assault on like Marissica probably, and a lot of the comments that I've seen are just like, you can't ever fucking know what fairy you're gonna do, like it's wild, like if you try to outthink a fairy, like they're gonna do this and blah 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 blah, and it's just like, that's all wild though, like that's just so fucking impressive. I know, um, I think we about that. We can't figure like- this shit out at all, 
Um, and they're just like, yeah, like you like, can't outsmart the fairy, whatever. And I was just like, it's one dude. Like, like it's one, one dude like, in Canada. Like, like, like he's a fucking person who just has like a crazy <laughs> brain. Like, yeah. like, yeah, like really fucking smart. It's so impressive. I know. I think about that. I'm like, this, yeah, no, it's true. Kind of blows my mind. I totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I'm like, how do you get this fucking in depth with all this? I don't know. Bravo, man. Like, real sp- good fucking job. <laughs> it's really, like, you're doing a really fantastic job with all your <laughs> stories. But yeah, that that is a good point with the fairy. Yeah. Like, yeah. <sighs> so, we're kind of talking about, and we kind of went over this a little bit um, in terms of Maggie talking about her backstory. What are your thoughts on goblins and, I guess, goblin queens so far? And Pact versus Pale, because it seems like, as you were saying, well, we've seen a lot of goblins in Pale, um, mm-hmm. but it seems like a different tone almost in Pact, right? Yeah, I mean, I keep having to remind myself that like Pact is the scary book, and Pale is like the like more approachable fun book, mm-hmm. because like it makes sense that a lot of things are going to be scarier and more hardcore in this story. But like Wild Bo also doesn't seem to enjoy creating characters that are like one dimensional yeah. whereas like so far the goblins in pact are kind of one dimensional i mean there was arse pint who like fucking great but like i think a lot of my love for arse pint came from like my association with like the goblins in pale mm-hmm. whereas like there's like i mean it's like there's talk in pale about goblins being like super powerful and scary but those aren't the ones we see and i always forget about that Whereas, like, it's very much lurking in Pact with, like, Barbatorum is maybe sort of a goblin and, like, the goblin who totally fucked up um, Minnie and, mm-hmm. like, these goblins who, like, completely ransacked and destroyed this town. And, I mean, there, there's flavor in Pale about how cruel goblins can be. And, I mean, the, the description about taking people and dragging them down farther, like, really reminded me of, like, Barney's. Hmm. Yeah. And, like you know, getting people more and more addicted to alcohol um, and stuff. But it just, like, feels much darker. And similarly, like, the Teds, like, love and adore their goblins. Whereas, like, Maggie's like, fuck these people. Um, I'm going to enslave them. Mm -hmm. That sucks. (laughs) Do you think there's anything that is going to pop up in the story that's going to make you more like understand or more sympathetic to Maggie's view or do you think it's more likely Maggie's gonna change and become more tolerant um I think the first one will definitely happen where like I'm gonna understand more about Maggie's point of view I mean I'm hoping to get more of like an actual detail of her backstory because Mm -hmm. it's come up in the council meeting when she's like I saw a whole village or town destroyed whatever whatever and then she brought it up again now um, mm-hmm. similarly lead to how I'm thinking we're going to get more of Blake's trauma, but I also, I don't know. I really hope that Maggie is going to move past that and start seeing that a lot of goblins aren't evil, I guess, and don't deserve to be enslaved. Hmm. Okay. So I'm kind of hoping both. Okay. All right, guys, it's time for our discussion question section. Um, our, Last discussion question was, if you defeated a fairy, what would you take from them? Our first person um, to answer this is Macy1, which I'll probably never say that name correctly, along with many other usernames out there. (laughs) They basically were saying, rather than something physical, they would rather extract a promise to leave them and their family out of their stories as much as possible. Um, And they were saying if they're feeling extra spiteful, Maybe they would try to commit them to making their story. Keep me as safe and happy as you can until I die. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Yeah. I yeah. like it. Yeah. Captain Rhino would claim the phase eyes so that they could see the world as the fairy does. Thinks it's good for illusion glamour. They could use it to uncover people's hidden nature and can improve capital S sight and your actual eyesight. So all good things. Yeah. That's pretty good. Never have to go see an optometrist again. You know, worth it alone. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, Next person, Hero of Old Iron, said that they would take her sword. Um, They were saying that due to the nature of a duelist, I guess due to 
they focus so much on the sword and theatrics, um, it would be stripping away a core part of her identity. Not to mention, then you'd have a super sweet glamour weapon to play with, and also a lot of new material to make stuff with, so kind of win-win there. Yeah. Bisexual Punch Party thinks that Blake made the right choice um, by picking hair, because um, hair grows, so you'd have an unending supply. I guess Bisexual Punch Party would take like all the hair and not just a little lock. Well, um, not necessarily. But if it just, like, grows... She didn't necessarily... Uh, oh, so, didn't necessarily say like the root of the hair, but okay. like just the... They're basically saying the nature of the hair grows. Mm. So, have a continuous supply. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great source of glamour, and it's possibly harder to be used against you, because it's just hair. All right. Beard of Valor then says they would take Grace away from the Fae. Um, It would cripple Fae. As for you, it'd be great just for your overall competency, theatrics, and combat skills. Code Zeta um, says the nuclear option. They'd have to promise to have boring adventures and to fight for them at her detriment. They best sum it up with a quote, fuck you and get dunked on, bitch. <laughs> yeah. They kind of went into like this really long paragraph that was wonderful. It was a little bit too long to put it all in here. But basically, it was like, I'm going to fuck your shit up. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> <It's> wonderful. <laughs> then we have Heavenly Scarification um, on Discord. Also had a pretty long paragraph. Um, it was pretty great to read so i would definitely get over on our discord and take a look at that we kind of shortened it down so i'm sorry <laughs> but, um we've got benign options and evil options basically um so she was saying her benign options to take would be sight slash eyes which is extra funny if you've listened to pace <laughs> <laughs> like of course that's your first one voice and hands and also bond to the phase master. Those are all pretty good ones. In terms of more evil beauty, she was saying this would fuck a fae up or turn them super dark and fucked up. But you also get to be hot in exchange. So, you know, <laughs> um, another evil option would be honor. So you take that story from her and push her from summer or dignity, which would make her more goblin. And that's really just the extra yeah, fucked up one. It's mean. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so time for our discussion question um we decided we're gonna do the weird one so <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna just say that in our scenario you have to choose a body part for your domain because of reasons okay so <laughs> which body part would you choose for your domain and why you don't have to limit it to human body parts so if you want to i don't know get stuck inside an owl's eyeball um mm. you know go for it just tell us why <laughs> yeah, um or like a kangaroo pouch or something that seems like a woo Ruben and elliot <laughs> right <laughs> you're gonna be like you guys are such idiots um, <laughs> yeah, i'm sorry <laughs> all right well, on that note, um, thank you so much for listening, guys. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please subscribe, share it with your friends, and leave a rating and review. If you'd like to support Wildbo as he continues to write fantastic stories, go to patreon.com slash Wildbo. You can follow the pod on Twitter at Pale Comparison or send us an email at paleincomparisonpod at gmail.com. Keep an eye out for our Reddit thread in r slash parahumans, where you can answer our discussion question and share your thoughts on this episode. In addition, if you'd like to see all of my predictions laid out, check out our episode description for a link to a prediction tracker. All right, our fun fact for the week, slightly Christmas related, although <laughs> not because I was looking for Christmas stuff, just kind of popped out to me. <laughs> so um, the original vocalist for You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch, was Thurl Arthur Ravenscroft, also known as Tony the Tiger from Kellogg's Frosted Flakes commercials. The more you know. <laughs> Have a good one, guys. Bye! <laughs>